Number three, erred concerning the faith. And that's the one we're going to cover tonight, erred concerning the faith. Amen. If I had to put a, a title on tonight's lesson, it would be Hebrew Cosmology, What is to Come? What is to Come? All right? And so I'm going to have three subpoints in this point number three. And the Bible talks about this all the time. It's the prophetic key right here. What was, what is, and what is to come. What was, what is, and what is to come. All right? All prophecy can be divided into that. Because you want God to provide, prophetically tell you what happened. Then you want God to prophetically tell you what's going on. <laughs> and then you want God to prophetically tell you what's about to happen. All right? And God can do all those things. Because he declares the end from the beginning. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? So let's talk about a little bit about subpoint A, what was. All right? It's going to be a bit of a recap, amen, with a few new elements in it. But it's important because of where we're going. As we look at what was, remember, we told you about true cosmology. Not the solar system. Not stars billions of miles away and numbers too big to even, hallelujah, really calculate. You see? High sounding nonsense. Somebody say, high sounding nonsense. That's what it is. That's what it is. All right? But Hebrew cosmology tells us that the earth has always been, according to the scriptures, number one, fixed, flat, and there's a firmament, a vault, a solid substance surrounding it. All right? That's Hebrew cosmology. Got a picture of it for you. Amen? Uh, uh, if the sound booth maybe can get that up. Amen? That's one of the maps, the early maps. Amen? That they believe uh, it shows the ends of the earth and actually the four corners. Amen? What I normally show you is just, amen, the firmament, amen. Um, but some of the other maps actually shows the corners and the ends. And some of the even more detailed maps show the pillars, amen, the pillars. Because God speaks about pillars that the earth is built upon. But we know that the earth is fixed from 1 Chronicles 1630. He says, fear before him all the earth. The world, all, the world also shall be what? Stable, that it be not moved. That's the word of the Lord. In Joshua 10, 12, it tells us that the world, the earth, does not move, but it's actually the sun and the moon that move, y'all. Then Joshua spake to the Lord on the day when the Lord delivered the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand thou still upon Gibeon. He would have never said that if the sun was already still. And God honored his word by putting brakes on the sun that day. Not only the sun, but the moon in the valley of Ajalon. Isaiah 38 is when, hallelujah, uh, 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 in the book of Isaiah, Hezekiah prays and the sun actually not only stands still, but goes backwards, y'all. All right? That's what the Bible says. It's, the earth is fixed and the heavens move. Earth is not only fixed, but it's flat. Isaiah 11:12 12 talks about the four corners of the earth, that God's going to gather together the dispersed of Judah. That's us. As the Hebrews, he's going to gather us. Where he's going to gather us from? From the four corners of the earth. And I'm here to tell you, amen, that a ball, a round thing, doesn't have corners. All right? Only something that's flat. And in Isaiah 48, 13, the Bible talks about that he laid the foundation of the earth. And I'm here to tell you that a ball don't have a foundation. It has a core. They've been lying to us, y'all. And it's time for us to wake up. Anybody hear me up in here? All right. Not only that, amen. We talked about Daniel 4.11. The Bible says that, hallelujah, that the earth has an end, that to the end of all the earth. And a ball doesn't have an end. It continues to circle. It continues to go around. Amen. As we talk about it being fixed and flat, there's also a firmament. Somebody say firmament. We get this from Genesis 1-6, where God said that he, he said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. And what God did, amen, there's water above the firmament, and there's water underneath the firmament. That's the oceans and stuff. And even water under that, the springs of the deep. 
In Job 37, 18, if you remember, just recapping what was, Job describes the firmament as strong as a molten looking glass. The sky is not just gas, y'all, that you could just fly through. There's a cover on that thing. Show them the picture. There's a cover on that thing, meaning if you go high enough, you're going to hit something. Amen. And you're going to hit the firmament. And the root of that word is firm. It's something hard. And Job says is that the sky, which is strong, is solid as, as a molten looking glass. That's the firmament. You see? As we look at Ezekiel 1 and 26, just skipping down some, boo. The Bible tells us what's seated on top of the firmament. Anybody can guess what's seated on top of the firmament? The throne of the Most High God, Yahweh, the King of Kings. He's sitting right there. They've taught us this false, phony cosmology that makes us think that our God is millions of miles away when he's right above the heavens, right sitting on the sky. The Bible says, and above the firmament, that was over their heads, right over the firmament that's over our heads. What is there? There's the likeness of what? Of a throne. Now watch this. As the appearance of a sapphire stone, hallelujah, the throne has the appearance of what? A sapphire stone. Remember that. Remember that. Okay? All right? And on the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it because we made in the likeness of God. So he has a resemblance of us. And that's right on the firmament. In Revelations 4, 6, I showed you. When John was taken up to heaven, hallelujah, door was open, and he saw the heavens. He was in the throne room. John saw the firmament, y'all. He said, in the throne room, hallelujah, and before the throne, there was what? A sea of glass. That's the firmament. A sea of glass. Like unto what? Like unto crystal. What is sapphire? A crystal. Anybody hear me up? All right? So God's seated on his throne, and he can see all the earth. The Bible says the inhabitants of the earth are like grasshoppers. Tell them. We all moving around fast, not knowing that he's looking at us. While we move in and out to and fro. We're just talking about what was. And then John Lede, listen, I was in my personal read. In Exodus 24, 10, because the Bible comes alive when your cosmology get right. In Exodus 24, 10, the Bible talks about Moses bringing the elders because they want to see God too. We know that no man can see God in the flesh and live, so what they saw was a vision of the Most High. And in that vision, they was looking at him in his throne room. And the Bible says, and they saw God, the God of Israel. The God of who? Israel. But look what they say was under his feet. And under his feet was a what? A paved work of what? Of sapphire stone. In the vision, they see God in his throne room. He's standing up and under his feet, what do you think they see? They see the firmament. He says paved. They say it's like a pavement. But it's not like concrete or asphalt. No, it's, it's, it's paved stone. Crystal. That's the firmament. He says it looks like a what? Like a sapphire stone. Now, y'all remember I just told you to pay attention to that sapphire stone? Because it just said that above the firmament, there was a throne like a what? Like a sapphire stone. Wait. So, the firmament looks like sapphire. And its throne looked like sapphire. So, you mean to tell me that what we call the heavens, the firmament, is the same substance that he's seated on his throne? That out of this looking glass of a firmament comes a throne built out of the same substance? You see, the heavens is his throne. Oh, God, have mercy. Are, are, are you with me here? The front, oh, God. All right? Now, does anybody know what a sapphire looked like? Now, the New Living Translation puts it in another term. Amen. It's got a whole nother stone. Hallelujah. They call it some kind of, hallelujah, as brilliant as a lapis lazuli. I don't know what a lapis lazuli is. <laughs> but they do stuff like that easily to hide it from us. See, because it's easy to find out what a sapphire looks like. It's a little bit harder to find what a lap, uh, lap, lapis lazuli 
But I was able to find a lapis lazuli for you. And I'm going to show you what a lapis lazuli looked like. Exodus say that under his feet was a paved stone that looked like lapis lazuli. Does that not look like the earth to you? Go ahead and flip again. They didn't know what they were seeing, but we know what they're seeing. That's one that's kind of polished up. All right? Flip that one again. That's sapphire. As blue as the sky. They say when they saw him. Come on, somebody. They say when they saw him, something was under his feet. It was, it was like a sapphire. John said it was a sea of glass. They was looking at the firm and didn't know what it was look, what they was looking at. See, we only know earth from our perspective. <laughs> They don't know it from his. They're like, what in the world is that? That's some bomb decorations. No, that's the firmament. Come on, give God some glory, amen. What was? We also talked about Catholics and Copernicus. Remember we talked about that? Because we wanted to know how this heliocentric globe model came into being. And we went back in time, amen, and we looked at the first person, one of the first people who come out with this thing, amen, uh, and definitely not, if not the first person who came out, the one who came out and pushed it out into the mainstream, and that would be Copernicus. Nicholas Copernicus, amen, just put down, hallelujah, my little points all at once, Brent. Remember, he was raised Catholic, raised by a bishop, educated in their schools, he became a canon, which was a ca college priest. He became a priest according to the encyclopedia. The church, Catholic church paid him his entire life. He was asked by Pope Leo to help change the calendar from Julian to Gregorian. He was urged by Pope Clement to expand his, his, his basic work on the heliocentric model. He had friends who were bishops and cardinals who pu pushed him to publish. And when he published, the church changed the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar, which we still use today based upon his research. There is an inextricable connection between this heliocentric model, Copernicus, and the Catholics. Let's talk about what was. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. What was real believers doing at this time? Y'all still up out there? John Calvin, amen, and Martin Luther and the reformers. Look what John Calvin was saying, B. These are, these are titans, amen, in the faith. John Calvin says, listen, we will see some who are so deranged, not only in religion, but who in all things revere, reveal their what? Their monstrous nature. That they will say that the sun does not move and that the earth, the earth is that which shifts and turns. When we see such minds, we must indeed confess that the devil possesses them. When they say that, does the earth move? He said, man, he said, this is so much against the Bible, the devil possessed people that come out with something like that. You see, we forgot about that, y'all. You see, but I'm going to show you here in a second that one of the weaknesses of mankind is that we die. Death is a weakness of mankind. It's a weakness that the angels don't have. And all the devil got to do is outlast truth. He just got to outlast it for one generation. And if you don't do a good job teaching your children truth, watch me now, truth dies with you. Go straight to the grave with John Calvin, Martin Luther. Go straight to the grave. That's why it's so important to teach your children and not allow that responsibility to be upon somebody else. Ooh, woo! Yes, yes. We're talking about what was. Now, we spoke about NASA. Y'all remember we talked about NASA last time? 
all right, the National Aeronautic Space Administration. And we talked about how they faked the moon landing. Anybody hear me up in here? Now, uh, my wife and, and Cole, amen, text me just now, amen. Uh, today, uh, Steph Curry came out. Anybody heard about that? Yeah. Steph Curry came out and said that they faked the moon landing. Amen. I might give y'all a clip of that, not right now, but I might give y'all a clip of that maybe a little bit later. You see, because our people are waking up. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? The Hebrew is not going to be lied to when we up, no. We're going to see right through that. You see, because real recognize real, all right? We ain't got no time for fake, all right? And so, so as we awaken as a people, this stuff is going to be obvious to us, okay? Because we his people, all right? And the Bible says, amen, of, of, <coughs> of all the, the, the trickery and shenanigans that's going to go on in the earth, amen? Listen, man, he going to keep his elect, yeah, y'all. He going to keep his people, all right? Now, we talked about them faking the moon landing. We talked about the political climate, why they did it. It was an arms race and a space race with Russia. We talked about the technology of 1969, how big them pocket calculators were, how large a computer was, the size of a pinto of an automobile. And they're going to come around here and talk about that they're going to land on a moon that's going 238,000 miles. Oh, no, 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 no. That's going 2,288 miles per hour and 238,000 miles away from the earth. They can't even get to the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico properly. How in the world are they going to land in the moon? In 1969? You see? I'm hoping that I can teach this again because what I would like to do is just go through the whole time period of 1969 and show you all the technology of 1969. I'd like to show you the ovens and how they didn't have a microwave. I want to show you how the cars look and how the houses look, how the air conditions look. I just would like to show you all of that and then look at what they claiming to have done in 1969. Come on, y'all. You know what kind of shoes they had in 1969? They didn't have no Nike Air Max. Listen. And you got what? Well, stop tripping. All right? We looked at the launch of these rockets and how they never go straight up. I was watching one this week because they had a launch this week. See, they go on overdrive right now because the truth is coming out and they want to use their media to dumb down the truth of God that's erupting out of the earth. Anybody hear me up in here? So they launching rockets, they landing Mars rovers, allegedly. You see what I'm saying? And it's all in an attempt, amen, to dumb down what they would call the mindless masses. All right? But I watched a launch this week. Amen. They called it the dragon rocket. That was one of the rockets, the dragon. How eloquent, huh? How appropriate, huh? Come straight from the devil, dragon. All right? And this thing went up, amen, and, and they know we watching the curvature, so they start putting all kind of different angles so we couldn't see. But as I watched, that thing went sideways. Why are you going sideways if you're supposed to be going up? Because you're not going up. Because you know if you go up too high, you're going to hit something that's going to hit you back. All right? Somebody say the firmament. Yeah, they fooling themselves. We looked at the launch curve pattern. We looked at the landing. No dust on the landing apparatus. Huh? No burn spot on the moon. No crater. Huh? That thing was as clean as Kingdom Clean had shined that up. They set that there. That was a prop. That was a Hollywood set. And the shadows corroborated that. Remember that? Shadows crisscrossing, amen. Showing us that there were multiple light sources. A studio said. We looked at the flag and it was blowing in the wind. Only problem is there's not supposed to be wind in space. We looked at the pictures and there was no stars. How could there be no stars in space? We have a problem, Houston. You're trying to pull one over us. 
There's wind when there's supposed to be no wind. And there's no stars when it's supposed to be filled with stars. It's space. <laughs> and then we saw the astronaut behavior. Beha behavior, pabon, pabon, pabon behavior. People trying to just ask you about your landing and whether you would put your hand on the Bible, you know? And we saw, amen, buzz, swing one that my daughter's still talking about. Huh? He cold copied, duck. Listen, if I went somewhere and somebody told me to put my hand on my Bible, I put that hand on that Bible, signed a Bible, amen. It, it, listen, it would be no problem for me. Same way if I'm in court and I got to put my hand on the Bible and go before court. It's no problem. The problem comes in if I'm lying. <laughs> Woo! All right? Now, listen, I got a video of Buzz Aldrin. Is one in, in his later life. And Brent's going to get it while I kind of get it ready because a brother from, from out of state sent it to me. He said, Pastor Omar, I've been watching videos and I, I saw this thing and I want you to look at this because later on in life, he's older now, he confesses that they didn't go. You're going to watch a five-year-old girl ask him a, a pertinent question. Why did we not go back to the moon? You're going to watch him grab his heart and say, we didn't go. From a psychological perspective, it was a person releasing a weight. A weight. All right? Buzz was the same one that cold cop that boy. He for real. All right? We know he for real. All right? Brent, you ready for this one? All right, watch this now. Check this out. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not a, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my eight. question. I want to know, but I think I know. I know. Because we didn't go there. and We didn't go there. And that's the way it happened. And, and if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why it didn't happen. So in the future, if we want to keep doing something, we need to know why something stopped in the past that we wanted to keep it going. But I think I know. You're going to rewind. Because we didn't. Because we didn't. Because we did. Conspiracy theorists. They concern, they've been crazy, but now they they're right. Come on, give God some glory, amen. And that that news that newscast that, that was after it said that we've been they say we've been calling people crazy for saying they didn't go. He says, but now after Buzz said that, he says it looks like they're right. Because the, the, it was an eight-year-old girl. The eight-year-old girl said, Why we didn't go back to the moon? He said, he said, that's not an eight-year-old question. Somebody set me up. And he said, but you know, that's the question that I want to ask too. And he said, we didn't. He said, he said, he said we didn't. We, we're not going back because we didn't go there, he says. You see? Come on, give God some glory, amen? All right? And you didn't go there because there's a firmament stopping you from going there. Um, for those who don't know, NASA is one of the most dangerous government agencies to work for. If you do your research, NASA scientists get knocked off all the time. Amen. Uh, in, a, in a few years span, amen, there's over 70 NASA scientists who pop up missing, amen, or have uh, plane crashes. I have some pictures, amen, amen, uh, uh, or, or they end up dead some kind of way, amen. And it just goes to show me, amen, hallelujah, that, that they dying more at NASA than police officers on the street. Anybody hear me up in here? And that's because when some of them come to the truth, they want to reveal that truth. And NASA's trying to keep something quiet. Come on, give God some glory, amen? All right, let's continue. We talked about what was. Now I want to talk about what is with you for a second, all right? We're talking about erring from the faith. And, and this is all important, you see, because what was was what the devil planted to get us to err from the faith. The cosmology would take us away from our God. Let's look at what is. Remember the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. I have a picture. Amen. Remember that book we talked about. 
You see, because the Catholic Church is not only, hallelujah, the only party that can be implicated in this high crime of treason against the most high God. But, hallelujah, Satan don't cast out Satan. And the devil don't work against one another. Amen. The devils work together. Amen. And so, hallelujah, the Catholic Church is working with this heliocentric model. But guess what? The Ashkenazis and the Khazarians, amen, the false Jews, amen, they work with it as well. Okay? And as we look at the protocols, protocol number nine, look what they say. Uh, uh, they say we have fooled. Uh, is the next one. We have fooled and bemused and corrupted the youth of the guard. That's everybody else. All the other inhabitants of the earth, white, Chinese, hallelujah, black, whatever. They call that the guard. We have corrupted the youth of the guard by rearing them in principles and theories which are known to us to be false. Did you hear that, huh? Theories that's known to us to be false. The earth is round. That's false. Earth goes around the sun. That's false. And they know that to be false. All right? Although it is by us that they have been inculcated, meaning that they are the ones that's putting it in the schools and in the ears of our children. All right? So from early on, y'all, it was the plan of the Ashkenazis to indoctrinate with false theories, hallelujah, our children. Amen? And remember what I said, truth will only last a generation, all right? So when the parents die, if you don't pass it to your children, truth is going to die with you. There was a generation that knew the earth was flat. Are you with me here, Sufo? But they never passed it down. And they allowed the devil to educate their children, all right? So, Pastor... How early do they begin to indoctrinate our children with the globe model, with the heliocentric model, all right? And the system that we live in, come on, flip a picture with me, they started in the crib. Started in the crib. And, and, and listen, I'll be the first one because we'll buy stuff like that. We'll put planets on the wallpaper, amen. We'll put the stars that glow in the dark on this guy. I wanted them things in my room. I'm grown. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right? And so you start early with that stuff, man. All right? And then they go to school, y'all. Huh? Kindergarten, first grade. What they doing? What they, what they find as soon as they get to school, easily? That old globe. Huh? In every classroom. You can't even have a classroom without having that globe in it. Oh, that's an agenda, huh? Just imagine you wanted people to believe your lie, hallelujah, and, 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 and all the schools had to put a picture of your lie in it. All right? Flip another one for me. Amen? Not only in the crib, at the schools, but after school when they want to watch cartoons. Guess what they're watching? Globe. Space. It's indoctrination, you know? See, a lot of people, amen, the world play a game with the church. The world tell the church, don't go to that church, they brainwashing you. When the world is the real one that's brainwashing you. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? This is social engineering at its finest, y'all. Because if you set something before somebody's eyes, that's what Jacob did when he wanted the, 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 the sheep to be speckled, amen. He did something, you, you know, Brother Hill, he set something before the sheep's eye, amen. And all of the sheep that was given birth at that time, they came out speckled. You, you know the scriptures. You set something, you set something before somebody's eyes. They're going to accept it, they're going to receive it, they're going to believe it, it's going to become a part of them. And we had a generation, y'all. That that glow, that solar system was set before our eyes since the cradle, y'all. Since the cradle. I bet we can go in some hospitals and they're in the hospitals before we even leave. And we done bought into that thing already. All right? Now watch this. I'm going to go through. I'm going to talk about some of y'all favorite cartoons. I'm going to offend some people. Watch this. Come on. Just keep flipping through with me. All right. Anybody remember Voltron? Oh, yeah, Voltron got a round earth behind him, got space all around him. Like he's somewhere. Boy, you couldn't get past the firmament. Stop tripping. 
And I used to like Voltron. All right, flip on through. Transform. Oh, yeah, it was from another galaxy, another planet. All right? You would be surprised how subtly they send in messages to us, making us believe something. It's to the point to where they did it so keen and so clean, people stopped doubting whether space was real, whether the, the solar system was real. It was never a question. It's only been a question, Sean White, as of late. And it's because there's a move of God. The Lion of Judah is roaming about. All right? Keep on flipping with me. Amen. Yeah, Green Lantern. Oh, yeah. Because all of that Avengers, all of that X-Men, oh, yeah, it's all on that, too. Pastor, I got to stop watching that. I'm not telling you. make your own decision. I'm not telling you you got to stop watching anything. But what I am telling you is, is that it's part of the brainwashing to make you know, or believe, rather, that there's a solar system. Keep on going. Oh, that was one of the best ones. Superman? Superman, Superman. Oh, yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, bum. And we all wanted to be Superman, even though he was now color, but we all wanted to be Superman. <laughs> all right? But the basis of the story was he was from a different universe, different galaxy. Huh? It's a lie, man. It's a lie. There's no other planets and galaxies where people can, there's none, that's, they don't have that. They was lying to us to get us to adopt a worldview that would push us away from our God. Where is God in Superman, y'all? All right? Keep on flipping. Come on, keep on flipping. Ooh, where Brian at? <laughs> the Power Rangers. Power Rangers had some space stuff going on, man. All right, flip that. Them clothes too tight. Flip that, flip that. Okay. Okay, okay, so they get us in the crib. They get us at school, Mike. We watch all the cartoons with nothing but galaxies, planets, and universe, amen. But we get grown and stop watching cartoons. So what they got to do, they got to make movies. And so they began to drop movies, Star Wars. Huh? That's against, that's, that's, that's space, man. That's galaxies. That's, come on, flip another one. Come on, let me give you another one. Woo! E.T. E e phone home. E.T. Phone, phone home. And boy, we was in there, huh? But we packed out E.T. I'm outside waiting for E.T. You remember that, Miss Kim? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, it was on, boy. To watch that little boy ride that bike on around the moon. E.T. After that, I was E.T. For, for three years after that. Walking around like E.T. E.T. Fun Home. <laughs> Extraterrestrial. Space. Planets. Social engineering. Indoctrination. Brainwashing. Come on, flip another one for me. This was Close Encounters of the Third Kind. That's when they played that instrument. Boom, 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 boom. Y'all remember that? I was like, that's weird, but I'm going to watch it. That's weird, but I'm going to watch it. All right, keep on going, keep on going. Watch this one. Anybody remember that one? Oh, yeah. what, what movie that is? <laughs> oh, yeah, we finally got a brother in the screen. We were like, oh, we going to see Will Smith. <laughs> but once again, space, planets, aliens, none of that's real. None of that is supporting our Bible. All of it is supporting the heliocentric global worldview, all right? Best I can't watch it anymore. I'm not saying that. My kids can't watch that. I'm not saying that. You're going to have to judge that. I don't want to be the Holy Spirit in your house. But one thing I can tell you is, you better tell them the truth. Amen. You better tell them the truth. All right? Same way you tell them fairy godmother ain't real, you tell them what's real and what's not real. All right? All right? Keep on going. Let me see. Avatar. Boy, that ting was good. <laughs> the blue people were running all over the place. Destiny. You didn't like it? The people were too blue. Listen. The movie was good. Planets, space. Keep on going. Destiny don't like that one. Star Trek, the next generation. 
Beam me up, Scotty. That's the spa. That's how they were doing that. I'm telling you, Mel. I'm showing a pattern here. What they was doing to us. Keep on going. Keep on going. What is? What is? Oh, yeah, Prometheus? Now, that was deep. Remember that one. Remember that one. Prometheus was all about an alien race that had created us. Keep that in your mind, right? See, because you can't just watch it. You got to watch it, and you got to listen for what they're saying. Woo! Because they're saying something. You think you're just going to a movie. They're saying something. They're saying something. You see a good boxer, a good offensive coordinator, a good pitcher, a good chess player, or make a move before his real move. Throw a punch before his real punch. Throw a pitch to set you up for the next. Oh, God. Run a play to set you up for the Oh, I'm giving y'all too much. Listen to me, huh? You got to watch the previous move because they got a move that's coming. Ooh, keep on going. Keep on going. Oh, some people going to get up and leave. They talk about my Avengers, Pastor. I'm just saying, they flying around space. They ain't got no space. And people bump the firm. Keep on going. Yeah, is there anything else after that? Alien. Ooh, it's a Johnny Reaver. That's all that movies we grew up on. And guess why we was watching that and having fun? What it was doing to our mind. Taking us further away from the Bible. Anything else? Anything else? Come on, son, boo. All right. That's some other ones. Water worlds. Men in black. Now, men in black preserve the chain. Gravity. The Martian. That must be a mistype rival or whatever like that. I don't know. Starship Troopers, District 9, Total Recall. That's all these movies they was using to brainwash us, y'all. To what? To indoctrinate us. Into what? Into their cosmology. All right? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21, look what it says. It says, prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. So what we was doing is we was allowing them to put all that stuff in our schools, all that stuff in our cartoons, all that stuff in our movies, amen, and we was just accepting it hook, line, and sinker without proving whether it was true or not. You see? All right? Now listen, before we leave what is, because it's going on right now, that's why it's hard to talk to your family about it. That's why, amen, hallelujah, as, uh, as Steph come out with it, amen, he, he, he's being persecuted even now. All right? All right? Because if you ever want to be persecuted, go in the public media and say that the earth is not a globe. They're going to persecute you. See what happened to Kyrie Irving. They made Kyrie Irving take back his word. He stopped talking about it. And right now, our brother Steph, amen, they, all the news medias are ablaze about it. All right? The funny thing about it is, a man could be anything he want. He could be a dog, he could be a woman, he could be, he could be anything he want. But he better not say that the earth is flat. He better not say that they didn't go to the moon. You can always tell authority. You can always tell who in charge. Whatever you can't touch, whatever you touch and it hits you back, you just touch power. You touch authority. <laughs> and when Steph said the moon landing didn't happen, he touched the jewel of the devil's false religious system on our planet. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you don't touch that. You don't touch that because this, this, is, how, this is how you're running everything. All right? Now, y'all, I pull a newspaper article. Amen. Babe, I forgot to, I printed it. I forgot to bring it. I pull a newspaper article, amen, from April 21st, 1900. See, because what you need to know is that as early as 1900, it was against the law to even teach that the earth was round. Oh, yeah. And people act like they've been teaching the earth was round forever. 1900, guess what? They was about to put a man in jail 
for teaching to kids that the earth was round. I printed that thing on, I ain't got that thing. Let me get close to that, John. Maybe I can see. No, I still can't see. <laughs> Let me tell you with the article about it. You know, I got a few little notes, amen. But check it out. All you got to do is put up April 21st, 1900. The date going to bring up the articles because that's how big it is. All right. Sir John Gerst tries to teach that the earth is round. In the newspaper article, they called it heretical and damnable doctrine, seditious and treasonous. They say he was trying to corrupt the children and they was looking to put him in prison. And they say if he wouldn't stop, amen, that they would even look at punishing him in even worse ways when you read the article. That was in 1900, man. That's 100 years ago. When people act like teaching the earth was wrong was the only way that, hallelujah, we can become learned. All right? When we go back into the 1700s, 1800s, and people in them classical educations, them people was a lot smarter than the students today. And they wasn't learning that the earth was round. Woo! <laughs> Anybody hear me up in here? All right. I just got a question for you. That's what it is, you know. Say that earth is round. I got a question for you. How you know it's true? Have you ever saw the earth to be round? Look at the evidence. Look how it come against God. Look how it makes our Bible ridiculous. It's a fairy tale. It makes men err from the faith and not run to the faith. All we got to do is look at mankind right now in the direction they're heading. And we can see that this cosmology is a tremendous problem. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. All right. So that's what's going on right now. That's why it's hard to talk with family or friends about it because they're in the matrix, man. They're being brainwashed, man. And it's not just, amen, the cartoons, it's not just the movies, amen, but it's even the logos. And it's even when we travel and we go to the malls and everything like that is on the news, amen. NASA always putting something out, especially when they, get, they begin to get hot under the collar when they know their lies about to come up. But let's look at our last point. This is where I want to be. What is to come? What is to come? All right? This right here is just the first part of the devil's plan. I will reveal to you what I believe in the spirit and the prophetic, which is the total plan of the enemy in regards to the heliocentric model. Amen. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, the Bible says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come of our Lord's return, except there come a what? A falling away first. You see? And the man of sin shall be revealed, the son of perdition. The Bible prophesies that right before the return of Christ, that there's going to be a great falling away. There's going to be a falling away of mankind from God, the Bible, church, amen. They're just going to leave by the droves. And I want to tell you that we are living in the midst of the falling away. We're living in it, though. We're living in it. I don't think that you keep track with church statistics like I keep track of. But all you got to do is look at your neighborhood on a Sunday morning. Not, no, not everybody going to church, friend. All right? There's a falling away going on. The Bible tells us, amen, in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, it says, Now the Spirit speak it expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. They're going to leave the faith. Why? Giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The falling away, amen. Is going to be, amen, precipitated by satanic and devilish doctrines. Amen. Things that come from the pit of hell itself. Lucifer himself. Amen. To socially engineer the people away from God. All right? Man is nothing to the devil. Man is nothing to the devil. Man ain't, you see, see that theory of evolution, monkeys and slime? That's what Satan think of you. You ain't nothing but an animal to see. All right? An animal to be controlled. All right? An animal to be sub, su, uh, 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 subjugated, made to submit, surrender, to bow down. That's how Satan view you. All right? All right? And his goal is to make that happen. All right? 
His goal is to make that happen. And what he does is he releases plans hmm, to be carried out in the world, in the earth, to move us, to herd us in the direction that he wants us to go. All right? Y'all listening on it out there? So his doctrines of devils, all right? In 2 Thessalonians 2.11, it says, and for this cause, God shall send them what? Strong delusion. That they should believe a lie. All right? God is going to allow Satan's doctrines and Satan's seductions, amen. He's going to allow that to sweep away and to seduce people. He's going to allow strong delusion to come out on the earth. And the goal of it is, he says, that they should believe a lie. All right? That's one goal. The second goal is in verse 12, that they all might be damned. God's going to send strong delusion, allow strong delusion. Why? So that people can believe a lie. Why? So that they might be damned. All right? Well, God, who are you going to do that to? Who are you going to allow that to happen to? Watch this. This is the category of people you don't want to be in. Those who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Those two groups of people, two groups of people, they're going to fall away. They're going to believe the devil, devil's seductions. God's going to send strong delusion. They're going to believe a lie. And he says, in the end, they will be damned. And the two characteristics of this group is the characteristics we must stay away from. Hallelujah. Number one, they believe not the truth. They don't believe the Bible, bro. When that Bible say, hallelujah, that is, that is flat, that is unmovable. When that Bible say he put a firmament over it. When that Bible say we all sinners. When that Bible say he's son of Savior. When that Bible say that Savior rose the third day. When the Bible says when you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, thou shalt be saved. Everything that's in here, if you don't want to believe the truth, guess what? Strong delusion. Strong delusion. Look at your kids right now. Look at them tonight. And if you see in them any neglect to believe the truth, huh? You tell them looking in their eyes. You see, because in the end, it ain't going to be no gray areas. No. You're either going to be with the truth or you're going to be with the delusion. Anybody hear me up in here? It's just two categories. You're either with the truth or you're with strong delusion. All right? Because God wants the, want the line to be fine, y'all. He's not coming back with no, no, no barber, though. It's going to be goat and sheep. You understand what I'm saying? Not, no middle ground. Goat and sheep. You see? The other characteristic, he says, those that had pleasure. Pleasure in what? In unrighteousness. Two things in the end that's going to get you swept away in this last trick of the devil I'm about to go over. If you don't have no respect and no love for the truth, and if you love sin, you take pleasure in it. You're not convicted when you do it. You look forward to it. You schedule it. You plan it. Listen to me, dog, and listen to me closely. These last days are winding down. And those that prefer the pleasures of Sodom the pleasures of Egypt for a season. Those that prefer the world and the lust thereof. Listen to me. Two words for you. Strong delusion. And while everybody else, amen, is protected from this delusion, you won't be. You won't be. You won't be. You'll think everybody else crazy that's marching towards God. That's thinking that the earth is not a globe. <laughs> You think everybody crazy that's thinking somebody is the real Hebrews. Amen. Why, why do I, why I can't receive what they say? Why I can't believe it? You in strong delusion over here. And why are you in strong delusion? Because you don't believe your Bible and you love your sin. Woo! Now let me show you the last, the last thing the devil going to do. We talk about what was, what is, what is to come. What are you doing? All right. Here's the last great deception. Let him who have ears to hear, 
hear what the Spirit is saying to the church tonight. It's going to sound crazy. But when they told Martin Luther that they had a plot to put upon the people that the earth was round, Martin Luther, them boys laughed at that. Nobody would ever accept that. We believe the Bible too much. And now, huh? Now, you can't even hear about a flat earth no more. Watch this crazy one. Watch where they're going. The Catholics, Ashkenazi, Khazarian, false Jews, the atheists and academics are all preparing to tell the world that there's life on other planets. Watch. Somebody say E.T. E. Phone home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, watch, watch, watch. Sound crazy, huh? Sound crazy, huh? Watch. It's all been for that direction. Well, E.T. is going to phone home. Did you know, watch this, watch this, watch this. Did you know that, uh, Sambu, flip the slide. Did you know that 62% of Americans believe in life on other planets? How could they not? Our movies and cartoons are inundated with it. We raise our kids on it. And not just 62% of Americans, but you'd be surprised of how many Christians, almost half, believe in life on other planets. Misha, what's the problem with that? Don't answer me. I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer. Because I want to answer. Don't answer. Well, according to the Bible, there's no other planets. It's just earth and a firmament with lights in it. How could there be life on other planets when there are no planets? There is no such thing as Mercury or, or Venus or, or Neptune or Mars. There's no such thing. That... So for, hallelujah, half of the Christians to say there's life on, on other planets, amen, Genesis is in the trash can. If creation is what God says it is, then there is no life on other planets. All right? The only other life, intelligent life, out of this world the Bible talks about are the fallen ones. The fallen ones. The watchers, the rogue angels, Lucifer, Azael, names rarely uttered in the church today, all too often forgotten among the annals of mankind, forgotten but not far. Listen to me. There's no aliens, my friends. There's angels. Anybody hear me up in here? They are here, and they have been here for a long time. Longer than you. Let me prophesy to you. It's my belief, what is to come, that these confederate, unregenerate, unbelieving, depraved groups of men will convince the world that devils are aliens and angels are extra, extraterrestrial. That these demons are actually from another planet. 
They will convince mankind that these devils are of a higher intelligence than us, a higher morality than us, and a higher level of care for the earth and the environment and can help us live in harmony and peace, can stop war, heal diseases. They will convince mankind, amen, as Aaron said to the people of Israel, these be your gods. Prometheus. For there is something whispering on the wind of academia that evolution needed a little help. That another race of people must have came down and helped us get from monkeys to men of higher intelligence who can manipulate DNA Ooh. and scientifically make us to who we are. Listen, I thought in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And on the sixth day he formed man out of the dust. But I'm telling you of a coming deception. A deception, a lie so big that you'll sit here and say, Pastor, it can't be possibly true. Who would believe it? And I tell you that Martin Luther and John Calvin said the same thing. Who would believe that it was round? Who would believe that the sun stood still when they watch it move every day? I share with you a great deception that's coming. A deception that's going to be marked by an awesome falling away. And Satan will have his achieved goal, the subjugation and the worship of humanity. For they will think he is alien when he is only an outcast angel. Guy console magno. Guy Khan So Magno is a Catholic priest. He's also a scientist and an astronomer. He is known as the Papal Astronomer. He is the Pope's personal astronomer. Flip, flip another thing. That's him with Pope Francis, and you can see him with the other popes as well. Your pastor's not lying to you. If you want to hear it, you can hear it. If you want to stay shallow, you can stay shallow. But strong delusion is going to take the earth. And Isaac, one day, you're going to be sitting in there, they're going to say, that old crazy pastor told us it was coming. Slip another one, please. He worked at CERN, that CERN in the background. <laughs> Valvo know where I'm going with this, because he, when you, when you, that, CERN trying to rip open the fabric of the earth, man. They, trying to open the abyss, Mike. They got angels here, like Satan that's loose, but Peter tell us that some of them angels were so bad, they locked them up in the depths. Mm. Come on now, do you know your Bible tonight? And they won't be released until the last day. John said, I saw an angel fall. And he had the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened up the pit and there was, as though it was smoke come out the pit. But it wasn't smoke, it was devils. It was angels who had power to torment men for a time. Let's go ahead and flip another one. Let's read that together. Can we read that together, class? Okay, on three. One, two, three. Very soon the nations will look to aliens for their salvation. You, you see, you, you think I'm clowning up in here. You think I come here to just kind of entertain you or something like that. I, I, I'm sharing with you, I'm unlocking 
Amen. I'm unlocking prophecy to you. I'm showing you, amen, what the devil has done. What he's doing to brainwash our families and keep us under his foot to this day. And then showing you where he's going with it. All right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know how many people are waiting for aliens to show up? Ain't going to be no alien. All right? That's that dude, man. Now, he a Jesuit priest. And if you had to look up how many Jesuits they have that's astronomers, it would be amazing. You know, I was nearly 40 by the time I took the vows as a Jesuit brother. He looked a little strange, too. But go ahead and flip through him. So he going around giving talks, you know, on cosmology. It ain't a Hebrew cosmology. And the prob problem is, Jaron, that Christian universities are letting him speak too. Go ahead and flip another one. Yeah, ORU, or Oral Roberts University. I got my thoughts about them too, but I ain't saying nothing. See that whole ecumenical movement where the churches are kind of like going with the Catholics and all that, going to meet the Pope and all that? That's for the devil, man. Yeah, yeah I said it. That's for the devil, man. That's for the devil. What, got, what Christ got to do with Bilal, though? Bible say if they preach any other gospel, let them be anathema, maranatha. Let them be a curse. People talking about you can get saved by Mary and all that. That's another gospel, man. Bible says if they don't preach Christ, don't even wish them Godspeed. Don't even tell them goodbye. Just say bye. Don't say goodbye. Bye. God bless the truth. But that's why the church is going because the church is falling away. And the Hebrews... Blacks need to understand that they got to stay away from the falling away of the Gentile church. We got to do something altogether different, Mike. If we see them doing something, we got to go the other way and do something else. Man, if you don't, man. I... There's so much I could tell you right now. Because some of y'all fighting in your spirit because you're stuck to your tradition instead of truth. See me, I don't care about no tradition. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. If it go against my Bible and my God, I don't want nothing to do with it. I don't care who say whatever. Now you got this dude setting up for aliens to come down that we're going to look, not from his own mouth, that we're going to look to aliens for a what? A savior? Man, who's my savior, man? Jesus is my savior, man. He the way, the truth, and the life. God have mercy. Come on, flip, flip again. Flip again. The days of deception, though. That's what we in. And the deception is so strong, you're going to sit here and something going to fight you from believing me. And everything that I'm telling you, you could go look up for yourself. This dude, I beg you, please go look him up. Please get his book. Read his book. He wrote a book. Hey Amen. Uh, uh, would he baptize an extraterrestrial? He wrote a book like that. <coughs> and his contention was he wouldn't baptize an extraterrestrial because they have a higher morality than us, and we can look to them to help us live right. Oh, get out of my face. Out of my face, boy. I ain't looking to no devil. No demon to help me live, right? I'm looking to Jesus. The author and the finisher of my faith. The last great deception is coming. It's coming, man. It's coming. It's coming. Before you would never see in the news, amen, uh, 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 little objects and stuff. They're showing them on the news now. Flying, oh yeah, uh, a sighting. They will begin to say they're communicating with intelligent life. 
That intelligent life is none other than fallen angels. The Pope and the Catholic Church will be their emissaries. Through technology and false religion, they will subjugate all mankind. Don't let go of Christ. Don't let go of your Bible. Don't let go of the true church of the living God. This will be the last scene, the final scene, the final thing that will get all men away from God to the worship of something else. The stage is already set. All the props are here. But then Revelation 19 is going to happen. I'm going to read this and then we're going to get out of here. Revelation 19 tells us in verse 11. <laughs> They're going to be confederate on the earth. But though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. They're going to believe in these angels and aliens and all this other stuff, and they're going to reject God. And then suddenly, 1911 says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness, he does judge and make war because that's what he's going to be coming from. Humanity will alienate him, and so he's going to come to make war. He's really coming to make war with the devil, but since you're going to confederate yourself with the devil, amen, God's going to have to deal with the devil, and he's going to deal with everybody who with the devil as well. Are you with me here so far? His eyes were as a flame of fire. On his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the what? The word of God. And the armies which were in heaven, they followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goed a sharp sword that with, with it he should smite the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. He treaded the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of, <coughs> of Almighty God. And his vesture and on his thigh a name written, in case you don't know who he is, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. That you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and them that sat on them. And the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast. And the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to do what? To make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. The deception. The delusion. But the battle won't be long. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. With which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. And them that worship his image. These both were cast alive, where? Into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant, all those that followed the devil, the remnant of his army, was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Let's have a word of prayer. God, we thank you so much for truth tonight. We thank you for not keeping us ignorant of Satan's devices. Father, my prayer is, is that nobody in this room fall victim to the strong delusion that's coming. It's already started, Lord. But my prayer is that you pull your people out of it, God. That one after another, like Steph Curry, like, like, like all of these guys, one after another, we would all wake up, God, and see your creation for what it is. That we would wake up and see ourselves for who we are. That we would wake up and see you. 
for who you really are. Now, Father, I know I said some things that might have ruffled some feathers coming against the religion, the tradition of men. But my prayer is that they would love you more than tradition tonight. My prayer is that they would love truth more than tradition. And I pray that when you look out on the earth, when everybody's receiving the mark of the beast, when everybody's bowing to this and bowing to that and believing this and believing that, my prayer is that we would be a church, God, that still believes your Bible, that still loves you, that still believes in the Savior. Let us be a remnant in the earth. Now, God, there's some in here who are not saved. There's some who don't love the truth. There's some that still take pleasure in unrighteousness. And Father, I'm scared for them. Because when the strong delusion hit, it's going to be impossible to believe then. So my prayer is that they be saved tonight, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God some glory. Woo. If you're here, amen, and you know what I'm saying is true, you know the Lord is coming back, and you know that devil is real. And you don't want to be caught up in God's wrath. Three words for you. Admit, believe, confess. Admit you're a sinner. Believe in the cross of Calvary. Confess him as your Lord. Let's pray. Say, God, thank you for loving me and not leaving me to the devil's devices. I admit I'm a sinner and I need a savior. I believe in Calvary's cross in Jesus' resurrection and my savior's return. Save me, Lord. Cleanse me. Give me a new heart and a new start. Protect me from the lies of the enemy and this wicked age. Use me to wake others up before you return. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. What was, what is, and what is to come. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and bless you. Bless you with shalom peace. Bless you with a, a sound mind. That you don't be tricked. You don't be duped by no devil. No movie, no cartoon. That you know that there, are, that there is a God. That there are men and women. And that there are angels and devils. May he bless you with peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Love y'all. Be blessed. Be blessed.